Okay, so we have seen how uh, Cauchy Riemann conditions, you know, hold whenever the concept of a derivative is you know, well defined for a function of a complex variable. We have also seen that you know, Cauchy Riemann conditions and some uh, you know, continuity properties together are also sufficient conditions for a derivative to be meaningful. But we do not explicitly point out what the value of the derivative of a function would be when it's well defined. So we will quickly use this lecture to explicitly write down the value of the derivative when it exists. Okay, so so you are given some function f of z, right? As is customary, we write it as u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y. And if it is differentiable at a point, then the Cauchy Riemann conditions hold dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y is equal to minus dou v by dou x. So the value of the derivative is also something that can be represented in terms of these partial derivatives. Right? So any of these following four equivalent ways are acceptable. Right? So so in fact, you know, one way in which we argue that you know, Cauchy Riemann conditions must hold is by trying to work out this derivative in different directions, right? So if you uh, recall from you know one of the earliest discussions around Cauchy Riemann conditions, so we in fact argued that you know if you approach in one direction, you would get dou u by dou x plus i times dou v by dou x. But if you, I mean, you can also derive one of these and then simply use the Cauchy Riemann condition. So you have dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y. So in place of dou u by dou x, you can you put dou v by dou y and leave dou v by dou x as it is. Or it may be sometimes more convenient to you know replace both of these. So you have dou v by dou y for the real part and you write the imaginary part as minus uh, dou u by uh, dou y. Or it may be sometimes convenient to just work out dou u by dou x and then uh, the imaginary part to be just minus dou u by dou y. Right? So all of these are really the same and they better be. Right? So that's the content of Cauchy Riemann condition. So if a function is differentiable, the value of the derivative can be evaluated in any of these above ways. Also, if a function is written in polar coordinates, right? So then uh, also, it is convenient to write the real part and imaginary part of your function, but each of these real part and imaginary part must be thought of as functions of r and theta rather than of x and y, right? So Cauchy Riemann conditions we saw, you know, where dou u by dou r is equal to 1 over r, dou v by d, dou theta, of course, we assume that r is not 0, so dou v by dou r is equal to minus 1 over r, dou u by dou theta. Now, the value of the derivative can also be worked out in polar coordinates. Uh, so, using the fact that you know x and y are defined as r cos theta and r sin theta, and using the chain rule, so we have dou u by dou r is equal to dou u by dou x times dou x by dou r plus dou u by dou y times dou y by dou r. And dou u by uh, dou x you leave it as it is, and dou x by dou r is the same as cos theta, and dou y by dou r is sin theta. So this dou u by dou r is the same as cos theta dou u by dou x plus sin theta dou u by dou y. So similarly, if you took this other function dou v by dou r, you know, take the function v of r comma theta and find the partial derivative with respect to r. So again, you will get the same kind of a relation dou cos theta dou v by dou x plus sin theta dou v by dou y. And then using Cauchy uh, Riemann conditions, it's convenient to rewrite these two equations. So dou u by dou r, you know, write is equal to cos theta, dou u by dou x, you write it as it is. But in place of dou u by dou y, it's convenient to write minus sin theta dou v by dou x. Right? So you'll see in a moment why this is so. And likewise, dou v by dou r, we write cos theta dou v by dou x as it is. And then in, in place of dou v by dou y, we just write down dou u by dou x. Right, so that's the Cauchy Riemann condition we have applied you know, here and here, uh, you know, in place of dou u by dou y 
and in place of dou v by dou y, we have written minus dou v by dou x and dou v by dou x, right? So once we have these two equations, we just add the two, but with a factor of i associated with the second of these equations. So if you do dou u by dou r plus i times dou v by dou r, then you get cos theta dou u by dou x minus sin theta dou v by dou x plus i times cos theta dou v by dou x plus sin theta dou v by dou x. Now rearranging, you have cos theta plus i times sin theta you know, is, is multiplied by dou u by dou x. Then if you pull out an i, then you have a cos theta, you know, this minus sin theta can be written as plus i squared sin theta and you pull out one of these i's, so you have cos theta plus i sin theta, you know, both of them have this factor dou v by dou x which comes out. And then we see that this factor cos theta plus i sin theta is common, so you pull it out and also we use this Euler identity. So cos theta plus i sin theta is the same as e to the i theta and we have this expression dou u by dou x plus i times dou v by dou x. So in other words, we have managed to show that dou u by dou r plus, uh, so dou u by dou x, I, I mean I write it, write you know this right hand side, I pull out only this dou u by dou x plus i times dou v by dou x is the same as e to the minus i theta dou u by dou r plus i times dv by dr, dou, dou u by dou v by dou r, right? So, but what is this quantity? This quantity is nothing but the value of the derivative at that point in Cartesian coordinates. So, the value of the derivative in Cartesian coordinates is this df by dz is equal to dou u by dou x plus i dou v by dou x. Therefore, the value of the derivative of the function in polar coordinates can be written as simply e to the minus i theta times dou u by dou r plus i times dou v by dou r. Right. So often it is convenient to work out the value of the derivative directly in polar coordinates. Right. So sometimes it's much more tedious to do the check for Cauchy-Riemann conditions in polar uh, in Cartesian coordinates, and therefore it is quite useful to have this polar form ready. And so that's what we did in this lecture. We worked out the value of the derivative both in Cartesian coordinates and in polar coordinates. Thank you.